Hello and welcome. This is Misty again, and we have a part two for SMAW. So we're going to talk about different types of welding currents. This applies in general and not really specific to SMAW, but it affects SMAW. Okay. So here we go. There are three types of currents that is used for welding. AC, or alternating current. DCEN, or direct current electronegative. An older term for that would be direct current straight polarity. DCEP, or direct current electrode positive, and an old term for that would be direct current reverse polarity. Each type of current has different effects on the weld. Well, come on. All right, direct current electrode negative. Direct current tells us that the current can only move in one direction. DCEN also tells us that the electrode is going to be negative. So if we look here, there's my negative, okay? So the cable to the electrode holder will be plugged into the negative uh, slot. And once a circuit has been completed, the flow of the electron goes towards the workpiece so that we can see it goes towards our metal. Okay, it's pretty cool, right? All right, DC electrode positive. Well, direct current tells us that the current can only move in one direction. DCEP also tells us that the electrode is going to be positive. So if we look at our picture here, we can see that it goes from the positive. This time the cables uh, to the electrode holder will be plugged into the positive slot on the welding machine. The flow of electrons in this case go away from the work. So we can see it comes up and away. All right, AC or alternating current is just what it sounds like. The current is alternating, mean the current goes from positive to negative. The positive side is called an anode and the negative part is called a cathode, okay? So it goes from positive to negative, positive to negative, okay? The term hertz refers to the time it takes to complete one cycle. In the U.S., 60 hertz is very common, and in other countries, 50 hertz is used. Okay, so now we're going to talk about types of welding power supplies. This is really important to know and understand because certain types of welding must have a particular type of welding power supply. The first type is constant voltage, or CV. The best way to describe constant voltage is that the machine is set to a particular voltage and amperage. When the arc is struck and maintained, the welding machine tries to keep the voltage the same by varying the amperage. Constant voltage welding supplies are used by wire feed machines. CV allows for the wire to be burned and consumed. The other type of power source is constant current or CC. As you guessed it, the amperage and voltage are set, but when the arc is struck, the welding machine tries to maintain the amperage by varying the voltage. This type of power source can be called drooping arc voltage because the voltage decreases when the amperage increases. SMAW and GTAW require constant, uh, constant current welding sources. And we can see the difference between the machines by the chart on the bottom. So here's our constant current and here's our constant voltage. As we can see that uh, constant voltage is a little straighter and we can see that it starts to drop off. Okay, open circuit voltage. To better understand, let's talk about an SMAW machine. We know that voltage drops when amperage increases. So this gives a high open circuit voltage before an arc is struck. And when we talk about this in just a second. Having a high open circuit, it, the voltage stabilizes the arc. So once the arc is struck, the voltage will dramatically drop, and this is a closed circuit. So open circuit voltage. The best way to describe open circuit voltage is the lights are on, but nobody's home. Open circuit voltage means that everything is on, the machine is on, your, uh, your electrode is ready to go, but the arc has not been struck yet, okay? So there's a surge of pressure when the arc is struck and that pressure is voltage, okay? And it makes it easier to strike the arc. So as we've stated, we're working with some very high power electrical current. 
the maximum open circuit voltage for a welding machine is 80 volts. The higher the voltage, the greater chance of shock. So it's important to be aware, but most welding machines will not allow you to turn up the machine to unsafe levels. Most times the machine itself will have a fail safe to protect the user. Operating voltage, ooh. Okay, this is also gonna be called arc voltage. This is the voltage after the arc is struck and you're welding. The pressure of the voltage after the initial strike becomes a, a little bit lower when it's being used. So operating voltage is usually between 17 and 40 volts. We can also have a voltage drop. Just as the example of the water hose, if you have a really long water hose and only turn it halfway on, by the time the water gets to the end of the hose, it's barely a trickle. This can happen when your welding cables are too long. So you must turn up your bolt in an amperage to correct for the loss. Okay, now we're gonna talk about arc blow, okay? So this can be a little bit difficult to understand, but roll with it, okay? So when we're welding, our electrode actually creates lines of magnetism that wrap around the electrode. As we could see, it, it kind of swirls down our electrode, okay? The plate or the part we're welding also has a certain amount of electrons and magnetism flowing through it. So if we can see here as a plate, it kind of has some of these. Okay? So now that we understand that we have magnetic forces at work at our electrode, we can see how arc flow happens. When the magnetism of the electrode and the magnetism of the plate bump into each other, there can be arc flow. Okay? So arc flow is a term where the arc is wandering around and it's not focused where the electrode is placed. I've had arc flow where the, the arc actually spun around. Okay? Usually smaller plates tend not to have any issues with arc flow, and, but as we get into longer and more complex weldments, arc flow can be a big deal. So how do we control arc flow? So there are several different remedies. The first one is connecting the word lead, another term for ground, to the end of the weld joint and weld away from the ground. Okay, that's a good one. Here's another one. Another way of controlling or reducing arc flow is to use two grounds and put them on both sides of the weld. Okay, you can also coil your ground around the weld and if possible, you may have to reduce the current. And here it is. This is one of the best ways to eliminate arc flow is to actually use alternating current. So the only issue with this though, is that if you're welding structural material, especially on a building, you may not be able to use AC due to the coder standard. Thank you for watching part two of SMAW, Weld the World.